Hello, it is me. And because you're on YouTube watching this, you know who I am. Hello. Um, yep, I think this is my second attempt now at doing this video because the last one ran over a little bit. So I'm going to get right to the point and say this is something that has confused me about recording with model uh, guitar model software, amp modelers, effects, plugins, all that nonsense, whatever you call it. What's annoyed me uh, is the the fact that people are uh, complaining about the restrictions on, uh, w well, not the restrictions, but the the way that it seems a bit clumsy to use uh, software in a practical sense. People seem to think, stick an amp out there, put a mic on it, um, you know, you just record it in the conventional way and you've got your sounds and it's simple and it's effective. However, you can use software in the exact same way if you just root it the proper way. Now what I've done here is I'm using Nuendo, which is Cubase for um, pretentious people. So that's why I use it. So I've got Nuendo 4 point, whatever it is, um, all, the new, all the new versions of... Um, Cubase and Nuendo have the, the routing capabilities that I'm going to show you. But Pro Tools, uh, Logic, whatever it is, you, whatever, your Poison, uh, all of those things, I'm sure they work in the exact same way. So ask me questions and I'm sure I can help you. Diving right in, what I've done is I've set a few things up to save time to stop running over. And the first thing I need to point out is your input channel the way that your DI signal for your guitar comes into the, the program is vital. Get a good level, get it set up um, the way you normally would. Get a nice hot signal, not too over, not too clipping, not too quiet. Uh, not, not clipping at all, really. And Nuendo's input channels here, I'm not going to cover all the, the, bit, the tiny details like that, but see this kind of stuff here, like... Using the, the inserts on the input side in Nuendo means that whatever whatever passes through there yeah, goes to your audio channels here to be recorded and it's it's hard written. You can't change these after the fact. Now, there's a few reasons you'd do that. Mimicking um, inserts as you would on an analog desk with plugins, for example, so, uh, if you know that you're not going to want to change a sound later. In this case, this is going to help our sound and it's something that we don't need to change later or we can't change it later on purpose. What you want to use is whatever plugin you're used to that has a high a high pass filter and a low pass filter or a high shelf and a low shelf, whatever you want to call it, and a gate. It's the two things you're going to want. So I'm using the Waves SSL plugin because it's awesome and I'm used to it and I know how it works and all the rest of it. I'm just very comfortable. If you've got it, use it. It's good. Set your filter here to about 75. It could even be 80 or 90. And set the top one to 9 or 10 kilohertz. 75 hertz, 9 kilohertz. The reason being, your DI signal is too rumbly and too fizzy to get a, a usable, realistic sound from software. It's not the same as an amp. It's not. It's never going to be the same. It might be in the future, but for now, I can't see the way. I, a lot of people don't understand what it does. I don't really understand it. I can just hear the difference, and it actually improves your tone uh, from software by about a million percent if you're pretentious like me and you, you can pretend that you can hear that kind of stuff. Um, so that's what you want to do. Set that like that and set a slight gate just enough just enough so that you're getting, see I'm strumming the guitar there, just enough so that you're getting just a little bit of hum or uh, noise cancelled out. Enough of that, you you know what you're doing there. Use your own skills. Um, from there, add one audio channel, mono, do it in the usual way, project, add, uh, add track, mono, mono audio. I'm not going I'm to, I'm assuming you know what you're doing with this kind of thing, so I'm not going to baby you, I'm not going to you know, walk you by the hand every every step of the way. Do ask questions later on if you're confused. Um, you've got one audio channel. Make sure your input of that is the input of your guitar DI coming from your, your insert over here. Output, no bus. Very important. You don't want that DI'd single, uh, signal coming through. 
just put on the audio, mo uh, your input monitoring, just turn that on, have it up at zero, perfect. That's all you need on that one. Create one group channel. Again, project, add track, group channel. This is your amp. This is the magic bit. This is where I'm going to be testing out Guitar Rig 5 as well. I'm just going through a few presets to lay down something for you. So load that in, or whatever it is you want to use, Amplitude, whatever. Load that in. Fun, fun, fun. Very simple. Again, you can actually, you know, use your guitar input here to load pedals. I would use that one for pedals, um, whatever it would be. You know, if you've got some cool, crazy pedals, stick that nonsense in there. Just because it makes me, I, I look at it as, this is before the amp. Uh, that that's that's your guitar. This is the this is the floor, and this is the the amp. So keeps it nice and tidy. So load your amp in, and on that group channel again, output no bus, not stereo out. We don't want it on stereo out. <laughs> that sounds nasty right now because that's up full. The reason being, the reason being, when we route that to an audio channel to record, we don't want to have this. Um, decide how loud the amp sounds to us listening to it so before mixing it down obviously as you're listening to it live so that's important for the, the main reason that you can you can't balance it you can't balance it to the to the level of what's already recorded so leave those two zero no bus for either of them and right now you can see there's a a signal going in from the guitar but you can't hear it yet so what I've done is you want to be adding a, a stereo, a stereo audio channel. So again, add another stereo audio channel. One will do for now. So add one in, and because Cubase New Endo from about four, you know, four onwards, you can route groups to audio channels and audio channels to groups and all kinds of really crazy stuff, and it's really good fun. Um, oh, sorry, I've actually I've I've missed one thing. The the audio channel for your guitar input and the sends, send that pre-fader up at Unity, just up at zero, send that right there like that. Easy way to do it is just to sort of, you know, when, you, when you've turned it on, pre-fader, hold down control, click on the blue line, BAM! Up it goes. Let's do it one more time. BAM! Sweet. So that's going to send the guitar amp and that's why that's why you can see the signal going in. And this audio channel that you're going to actually record on goes groups, guitar amp. So you've got the top, groups, guitar amp, and stereo out. Or if you want to you know, do your own mixing and go crazy, you can change that later as well to something else. So hit audio monitoring. Magic. So I think I don't want to use that. I'm going to, you know, I'm going to batter down a couple of just to show you how simple this is, and this is why, this is why we like to do it. I think I'll use I'll use that set. Yeah, that's that's a sort of nice rhythm for now. And I have some nice drums laid out courtesy of Contact Five, which is even better than Contact Four. I found it to be a lot. Uh, more CPU friendly and I've got a drum kit um, set out that I like from Abbey Road and an extra couple of things, kick and snares from Stephen Slate so combining those two you get this head fuck of a kit that's brilliant as far as I'm concerned, heavy breathing, heavy breathing um, yes yeah, so you can hear that that's me playing on live So, <laughs> if we hit arm for record and play back, I will very quickly and randomly batter out a little tune and <laughs> you can see it all coming together really quickly. So if we take off the record and um, monitor, you can hear that back. Isn't that 
of fun. Now I named that guitar one, GTR one. So let's do another one. And this time when you arm it, setting your your input from guitar amp and steady about. Uh, steady about. <coughs> We're hearing that twice, so let's just double that up. so angry and I'm so emo. No idea what's going on. Right, so we have a nice big rhythm track. <laughs> mm -mm, taste the vibes, taste the vibes. Guitar 3, gonna go for some kind of cheesy. Again, add another channel from Guitar Amp. It's all very simple. You'll figure out your own way of working. That's that's comfortable for you. Let's let's feel like what was a what was a good one. Nineteen ninety three hot solo rig. Actually, maybe not. Let's go for something like. I was playing around with a few of these earlier, <laughs> and I can I'm not I cannot solo to save my life. Shredder solo. What's that one like? <laughs> Sounds quite funny. Uh, yeah, so let's have a wee bit of leakage. <laughs> Lost myself a bit there. How does that sound? This must sound ghastly now. Bullet for my Valentine. Eat your heart out. <laughs> oh, do you know what I mean? You get the point. These are all recorded now. These are your hard written. Hard, just muted myself, hard written uh, track, uh, tracks of guitar that are all now essentially, um, that are all now essentially as if they were recorded from a real amp and the flexibility of, and speed of doing that, you know. <laughs> but not the tune. The tune sounds like ass. I hate Bullet for My Valentine, that kind of nonsense. <laughs> what the hell was that? Mmm, sounds fun. <sighs> yeah, so... Oh, shut up. Right, <laughs> so there you go. Enjoy. Um, if you have any questions, ask. And thanks for watching. Rock on.